While our next guests just missed being teammates at Notre Dame, this past season, they did play on the same team, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and helped the Pens earn the ultimate prize in all of hockey, the Stanley Cup. Defenseman Ian Cole earned All-America honors with the Irish back in 2009 before turning pro in 2010 and signing with the St. Louis Blues, who had drafted him in the first round of the 2007 NHL Early Entry Draft. After five seasons with the Blues, he was traded to the Penguins in March of 2015. This past season, Ian played in a career-high 70 games for Pittsburgh, and he scored his first professional postseason goal to open the scoring in the Penguins' three-run win over San Jose in the Stanley Cup. Left wing Brian Russ graduated from Notre Dame after a stellar career that saw him score 43 goals and dish out 54 assists in 161 career games. He signed with the Penguins after his senior season and has played parts of the last two seasons with the Pens, remaining with the NHL club after his call up from the minors last December. His biggest NHL moment so far came in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals when he scored both goals in a 2-1 Pittsburgh win over Tampa Bay that clinched a berth in the Stanley Cup Finals. We are delighted to welcome these two Stanley Cup champions to our show today. Thanks, Jack. Thanks to both of you for being here. This is, uh, this is really exciting. I, uh, I didn't miss a minute of the Stanley Cup. So I, I, I saw those goals. I saw, I saw all of it. I, I, I think the Stanley Cup is the best postseason in professional sports. I think the NBA sort of slows down. It becomes a, a little bit more of a grind. The NFL gets a little cautious when it gets to the playoffs. Stanley Cup, man, every shift. It, 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 you must feel the intensity ratchet up all the way through it. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's they say it's kind of two separate seasons, right? Right. Uh, you know, you got your 82 games of the regular season where guys are trying to get through it and not get hurt and obviously get into the playoffs. Uh, and then once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. You have eight seeds winning Stanley Cups. Um, you know, so it's uh, you certainly have a fresh slate. And, um, you know, we obviously were able to take advantage of that. Yeah, I think um, you kind of see that as soon as you get into the postseason, guys are leaving everything on the line. They're not they're not saving saving anything for any time, and it's kind of just taking one step at a time and just kind of go 100%. I got to ask, now, now, have you each had your turn with the cup? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did a couple weekends ago. All right, what what'd you do? Um, I played, uh, my family's huge into golf, so played a, played a round of golf in the morning. Uh, to use the cup as my ball marker a few times, and then uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you tend to put his ball back in the front of the cup, yeah, an yeah, extra yeah. like foot and a half. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit. It was I was a little lenient with it, and then, um, then did some did some things with family and friends. Um, took a lot of pictures, saw a lot of people I hadn't seen in a long time, and then um, kind of at night, just kind of enjoyed it with my friends and my uh, and my close family, just trying to take in everything. Yeah, we uh, we had a pretty packed day. Uh, went to the Children's Hospital at University of Michigan. Oh, great! Uh, Ronald McDonald House. Uh, went to lunch with my buddies from high school, and then took it to uh, the public rink I played at as a kid. Did a public viewing there, signing pictures and everything for like three hours. Uh, putting put in a good shift there, uh, and then had a party back at my parents' house. Uh, and then uh, went to a couple bars in downtown Ann Arbor <laughs> after that. So <laughs> took her out in the town a little bit. Now I assume there's a keeper of the cup that must go with you everywhere to. Uh to make sure you don't violate whatever the rules for cup management are? Yeah, they're pretty, uh, they're not too strict about it. Basically, as long as you're keeping it in, you know, uh, out of the public eye in a negative way, right? So no strip clubs, no casinos, uh, pretty obvious things. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, uh, you know, whatever you want to do within reason, they're, they're pretty good about it. Wow, that's great. That's fun. Um, both from Michigan. Yep. How were we so fortunate to... Uh, to, to get some Michiganders to come down here? Um, for me, my older brother went to Michigan. My dad went to Michigan. And I was kind of always in the shadow of my older brother. And I kind of wanted to kind of break away from that and forge my own path. And I thought, no better place than here. Yeah, and I'm from Ann Arbor. So I grew up going to every Michigan hockey game. My dad went to dental school at Michigan. So uh, I grew up only wanting to go to Michigan. Um, and then came down here on a visit. Uh, freshman year of high school and loved it. Uh, got a scholarship offer and uh, visited some other schools. Nothing really compared in my mind. So 
um, made that decision and, and really pissed Michigan off. <laughs> so <laughs> I've done that on occasion too. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, exactly. yeah, don't we all? <laughs> I think we're all in the same boat there. <laughs> So being in the pros now, you guys, I know for football, a lot of our guys, you know, are in the locker rooms talking, betting on the games. How much are you guys involved with, you know, the players here and the team? How much do you guys follow that? Um, we follow the – I follow the guys a lot. I I know Ian does too, and um, we try and watch games if they're on TV or look at box scores and all that and say if our team's playing Michigan or Boston College. I know there's guys in our team who went to both those schools that uh, we had some friendly bets with them. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Try to keep the money out of it, though. You know, media yeah. doesn't like to hear about that. You know, some friendly <laughs> wagers. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And I know it's the same for James because he can't do otherwise. Oh, of course. <laughs> exactly. Um, the, the, the arc of both your seasons was, you know, had its own path, right? I mean, uh, wasn't there a coaching change? There was. Uh, mid-year, and that, yep. that changed a lot for the team, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mike Sullivan came in. Uh, he's a hard-nosed Boston guy. Uh, came in and, and held guys accountable, I think, which was huge for us to not only hold you know the lower end guys accountable, but our high end guys, the guys that are you know the league MVPs, um, right. holding them accountable um, to play the right way, to do the right things, to come back in the D zone, to help support uh, defensively, and then go and create on offense and go create things. Um, and I think being able to bring up uh, some of the guys that he did, some of the younger guys like Rusty. Uh, like guys named Connor Sheary that come up with a ton of speed. Uh, we were really o- able to open the game up, really turn it into a speed game, um, and no one could keep up with us from the second half of the year. No one could even come close. So that was uh, it. Was huge. Him coming was was huge. Yeah. Had you had you known him before? Had you had, Rusty had, played for him. I didn't know him. Yeah. Well, I was down in the American League, which is uh, the minor league, for six weeks at the beginning of the year, and then coach was gone and then all of a sudden he called up four or five of us and we never looked back yeah i mean speed was was clearly the differential throughout yeah. the tournament i mean you guys man you were fast it's crazy fast huh? um that must be a fun way to play yeah oh well, yeah it's um when you can kind of just go 100 percent and you know everyone's kind of following along it, it it makes things uh fun yeah yeah, that's, and that's the way the game's going now, right? The yeah. game's transitioning into a speed game. I mean, it's always been a fast game. But, uh, you know, the guys, the, the, the fighters, the guys that can't skate, can't make plays, they're not really in the game anymore because the team would rather have four lines of guys that can score, that can create offense, that can, you know, play with speed. Um, the guys that kind of lumber around aren't really in the game anymore, which, you know, just brings that, that lower end pretty close to that top end. So it's uh, the parity in the league is... It's pretty pretty crazy right now. So does that speed change the shift time at all? Um, or you can just get a little bit. Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, shifts in hockey range from you know thirty seconds to forty five. You yeah, get to about a minute, that. you're getting pretty tired. You get to a minute and a half, and you're gassed. <laughs> and um, you know, it's uh, when you you're right. When you want to play with speed, you know, you probably take quicker shifts. You look for more opportunities uh, to get that change in smartly. Um, but I think. Uh, when it comes down to it, yeah, you get better conditioned. You do it over, you know, four or five months, you get used to it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like a football team playing a hurry-up offense, right? Like, you get used to that pace, and you just go at it. Um, and for us, that was something that was very beneficial. Um, your, your path to the Stanley Cup was so exciting. I mean, the semifinals were every, every one of those games was, you know, was a white knuckler. And then you looked like you were on your way to the cup and you lost one. I didn't think you'd lose there and it got tighter. And then, of course, you, you prevailed. Outside the goals that we mentioned at the outset that you contributed, are there, was there a moment for each of you in somewhere along the way in the series that was really memorable where you just thought, man, we're going to get this done? Um, in New York in the first series, I can't remember if it was game three or four, but um, – we were playing a really good game, tied one to one in the third period. We were we were out shooting them, we were out playing them, and sometimes in the playoffs, the goalies can kind of steal games, or you need heroes that wouldn't be heroes to come up big. And our oldest guy and the guy who's been around the league the longest, Matt Cullen, came up with a huge goal kind of late in the third period, and we won two to one. We might have scored an empty netter to make it three to one, but kind of from there on. Out was kind of all right. Who's gonna be up next? Who's gonna score the big goal tonight or make the big play tonight? And it kind of each night there was somebody new making that play. 
Yeah, and I think that when, for me at least, when I was watching the games and we were playing in them, there I don't think was one game where I looked back and was like, man, we were outplayed that game. Mm-hmm. Like I could confidently look at every game and we're, we're the better team. We should win this game. There's no doubt in my mind that we can take this. Um, and I think we had that kind of confidence that we could beat anybody. Uh, and, and that certainly takes you a long ways. Yeah. In a couple of games where you're the opposing goaltender, was, you guys were peppering them, but he, they were playing great. Yeah. A lot of great goaltending uh, in the series. You know, we, uh, we, we love the ND train in, in, in Pittsburgh here, and you guys are uh, adding one more this year, right, with, uh, with uh, Thomas DePauli mm-hmm. uh, joining the squad. So uh, try and keep sending them there, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, he's been a great player here, and uh, he kind of fits the mold of what our team is in pit he's fast he works hard um plays with a lot of pace and if he can kind of keep going up like he has been uh I, the sky's the limit what's the off season like for you guys short <laughs> <laughs> well, when you win the cup it yeah. is <laughs> yeah <laughs> what do you do where do you go um i yeah, i go back home to michigan it's kind of a three-week rest period and then it's get back at it get back in the weight room get back on the ice some guys don't skate till a little bit later in the off season. Some guys skate a little bit earlier. It's all pretty much whatever you like to do. But I mean, it's not too much off. It's two or three weeks, and then kind of right back to the grind. Yeah, I'm in I'm in Chicago for the summer, um, and you take three weeks off, and you just feel like absolute junk. So you like need to get back in and start working out again. But um, you know, at the same time, you're beat up. You've been going through, you know, like you said, everyone's put on the line and blocking shots, and the, your your body feels it. And uh, you know, being able to take that time off and try to rest up is good. And you know, hopefully, uh, not too much partying, so you can actually recover. But uh, you know, it, it's something where um, you know you try to make the most of your very short postseason. I mean, the guys that didn't make playoffs have been working out for five, almost six months now. Yeah. So. You know, we've been working out for like a month. So it's you enter the next season, you know, a little behind and you need to try to make that up as best you can. Um, so that's why it's it's really tough to repeat in hockey just because that that off season is so short. Mm. Uh, part of that off season involves uh, visiting here with a lot of uh, a lot of former players who, who are professionals and and working out. Is that, uh, is that a fun, fun opportunity for you? Uh, yeah, uh, for me, this is. One of my favorite weeks of the year, um, seeing all your old buddies and kind of sharing stories of, of the good old times back here in school and kind of seeing how everyone's year went and how everyone is and what they're doing now. I mean, it's definitely uh, something that I like. I look forward to. Yeah, it is. It's it's usually the last thing I do before I go down to, to Pittsburgh or whatever city that I'm playing in um, for that week or two weeks before the training camp starts. Um, so being able to come back and, and hang out with the guys and get around to golfing with everybody, end up going to the first home football game, it's, it's something special. It turned into a, uh, a tradition that I think everyone values a lot. So um, you know, being able to come back and, and obviously bring the cup back this year is, is obviously huge. Yeah, that is huge. And, of course, you come back and wonder why we didn't build Compton earlier, right? <laughs> no, exactly. For me, at least. Rusty exactly. played there. I know Rusty did it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But... Uh, we didn't quite get it done in time, right? Yeah, yeah. They told me when I was first recruited, oh, yeah, we'll have it before you get here. And then I kept getting pushed back, and then I'm gone. It's still not built. Yeah. I'm missing so. the stadium, too. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except the plan was to renovate the North Dome here. Yeah. Uh, that would have been a disaster. So I'm glad we, uh, yeah, we held yeah. off. And <laughs> I think it worked out well. <laughs> held off and got it right. Although the North Dome had its character. It, it did. Was, oh, yeah. Uh, and that, that now it's uh, now the fencers use it, so <laughs> uh, it continues to be in use. Well, guys, um, we're incredibly proud of you. Um, we love the way you represent this university, and uh, we hope this year is every bit as successful. And uh, love that you've come back and spent time with us. Look forward to to seeing the cup on Saturday, having uh, having eighty thousand people celebrate with you. Yeah, so, so thanks, thanks for a bringing lot. that by. Oh yeah. yeah. I thought you football guys like to see it, you know? Yeah, Hang out sure. we're, we're trying to get a little piece of that. So. <laughs> we'll get it in the locker room. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks again, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. We represent the greatest university in the world. Let's carry that pride tonight onto this field, and let's play for Notre Dame, and let's play 
for Our Lady. That's how we're playing today. I don't know what next week holds or the week after and three weeks down the road, but tonight, that's how we're playing this football game. It's caught beautifully. 